In this video, we will demystify the heavily underused notation Einsam. All right, so what is Einsam? Well, it's an extremely general way of performing various tensor or ND array operations, as you will see soon. But before we try to understand how it works, let's first ask the question, why? So Einsum is extremely convenient and very compact. And it's an operation that can be used as a replacement for so many tensor operations. So just the smallest would be matrix multiplication, element-wise multiplication, permutation, etc. And what is even more amazing is that it can combine multiple of them in a single Einsum call. So we can say goodbye to remembering the syntax for matrix multiplication for NumPy, PyTorch, and TensorFlow. Also, let's say you need to permute the input to match the function's call ordering. Yes, batch matrix multiplication, I'm talking about you. With Einsum, you can say goodbye to that as well. You don't even need to permute the output. That can also be done inside Einsum. So I guess we can say goodbye to that too. So what about the cons of Einsum? Uh, well, first of all, it can be a bit confusing, and that's why I'm making this video. Second is that we in practice oftentimes lose some performance because it's not as optimized as for a specific function call. But this is a bit of a generalization because Einsum is actually faster in some cases too, especially if you're combining multiple calls into a single Einsum call. So how does Einsum work? I think that is best explained with an example. So let's take a look at matrix multiplication. So the math for matrix multiplication looks like the following, where we will sum over multiplying the rows of A with the columns of B. Now, with Einstein summation, we can actually remove the sigma entirely because we're using K both for A and B. So the index K is repeated in the input sequence. Um, so we can write this without the sigma because we implicitly know that those dimensions are going to be multiplied and summed over. So let's compare this to the code for matrix mul multiplication using nested loops, which would look something like this, where we have two outer loops, i and j, and then an inner loop summing over the element-wise multiplications of a and b. We will come back to this in a second, but using einsum, we can do matrix multiplication with the following call where the ik specifies the dimensions of the first input a, and kj specifies the dimensions of the second input b. Then we do arrow and then ij specifying the dimensions of the output m. And as I said before, k here is repeated over the input, and this means that this dimension will be multiplied. So two important definitions is that we will define free indices to be the indices specified in the output. And then the summation indices will uh, really be all the others, but those indices that appear in the input, but not in the output. So going back to our example, ij here will be the free indices because they are specified in the output, and k will be a summation index. So the free indices are associated with the outer loops, uh, in this case, i and j, and then the inner loop is where we're summing over the summation index, in this case, k. After the outer loops, uh, we first initialize a variable total, and then in the inner loop, in the summation loop over index k, uh, here we will sum over uh, as we multiply the element wise of a and b. After obtaining this sum, mij will be equal to this total. So hopefully this was clear. Let's take a look at another example where we have defined two vectors, a and b, and we're doing einsum and then i and then j and then the output ij. So this can feel tricky to understand what is actually going on. So first of all, we have the free indices i and j, and then we have no summation index because all are used in the output. So when you feel doubt, use the nested loops, write out the nested loops. So we will have the outer loops i and j. After that, we will initialize our variable total. Now, in this case, we won't have a summation loop. So we will just do total plus equals and then uh, the indices ai 
left uh, element wise multiplied by pj and then we will set uh, the output outer in this case ij to be equal to that total now if you're familiar with this operation this is called outer product but the idea here is really that if you don't understand what's going on you can convert it to loops which you can then understand let us write down the general rules for einsum so the first rule is that repeating letters in different inputs means those values will be multiplied and those products will be the output. So an example of this is as we saw previously when doing matrix multiplication where the index K here is repeated. Now you have to actually be careful because uh, K for both A and B needs to be of equal length for this to work, otherwise you will get an error. But the second rule is that omitting a letter means that that axis will be summed. So if we have an example where we define a vector X, and we do ein sum and then i and then simply arrow specifying no output dimension this will sum the vector x so essentially we're doing sum of x the third rule is that we can return the unsummed axis in any order that we would like so for example if we input a three-dimensional array with shapes five by four by three and specify them as the dimensions i j and k and then we do arrow k j i this will reverse the shape to be three by four by five as the output. All right, so I think you now understand the fundamentals of einsum, but you may or may not agree with the following. Einsum to rule them all. Einsum to find them. Einsum to bring them all and in the elegance bind them. So let's go to the code to convince you of this fact. So we're going to show how to do a bunch of different common operations that you want to do uh, using just einsum. Uh, and you can use NumPy, uh, PyTorch, you can use TensorFlow. I'm going to use PyTorch, um, but of course you can just do, uh, you can just change it to using the specific library that you want. So I'm just going to import Torch. Uh, and in PyTorch, it's torch.einsum. In TensorFlow, it's tf.einsum. In NumPy, it's, uh, I guess, numpy.einsum. So it's a pretty trivial to, I guess, convert them to the different libraries. All right, let's start with initializing a random tensor. And we're going to do a matrix, or I guess a two by three tensor. And first thing we're going to show is how to permute the tensors. So we can do torch.einsum, we can specify ij, and then we can do, uh, let's see, arrow, and then we can do ji. And then uh, we just actually change that to, the, to another and then we just send in the input x so what this will return is the same tensor just uh, permuted so uh, this is the same as our uh, transpose but of course you can use this for multiple dimensions so it's a, really the general way of, of permuting a tensor all right if you want to do a summation and you, let's say you want to do uh, summation over all of the elements in in the entire two by three matrix, then you would do torch.einsum, you would do ij, arrow, that's it, and then x. So that would return the sum of the six elements. So if we want to do a column sum, we would do torch.einsum, ij, and then we would just specify j, and then x. So this is the second rule or whatever, uh, where we don't specify the dimension. And uh, in this case, we're not specifying i. So it's going to be uh, summed over that dimension. If you want to do a row sum, it's going to be pretty similar. We would just do ij and then we just specify i instead of j and then we send in x. Now let's say we want to do a matrix uh, vector multiplication. So we could do uh, v, we can do v uh, and we can do torch.rand uh, 1 by 3. So let's say it's a 1 by 3 vector and uh, we want to multiply x uh, with this vector. Now, what you would do is you would just do the uh, transpose of this, right? So you would get it uh, 3 by 1, and then you would multiply it with x. So you would do x matrix multiply v transpose. But uh, we can just do torch.einsum. We can specify the dimensions ij, and then uh, k for the uh, 1 here at the v. And then we're just going to do uh, specify j because that's those two dimensions are the same and then we can just do uh, let's see arrow and then we can specify i k and this uh, einstein will know to uh, 
multiply along the index that are the same, so the J1, and then we can just send in X, and then the second would be V. Now, uh, notice here that we don't need to care about reshaping stuff, right? Normally, as I said, we would have to do a transpose uh, before, but now we don't have to do it. We can just uh, specify the dimensions as we would like, really. So if we would want to do matrix multiplication, um, let's actually just use uh, X uh, again. So let's say we would multiply X together with itself. We would do something like X dot matrix multiply, X dot uh, transpose, something like this right and that's that's pretty clean too uh, but how we would do it with einsum is we can do torch einsum we can do ij uh, kj because remember uh, if we're going to send in x two times then the second input the second dimension rather is the one that's going to match then we do arrow we do um, i k and then we do we send in the inputs x and x right so this would return a uh, two by two, where we multiplied, sort of, we multiplied x with x, but we multiplied two by three times three by two. And then let's see, we're going to do a dot product. And let's say we're just going to take the first row of x. So how we would, uh, so how we would do this, if we would do a torch dot einsum, we would do i specifying the, the that dimension right this would be a three-dimensional vector then we would do comma i specifying the uh, same three-dimensional vector in x again but of course this could be two different vectors and then we would just do uh, arrow and then nothing right that would uh, multiply them and then sum them together so we could we could uh, just index in x right for the getting that specific um, row so we can do that two times and that would be uh be the dot product now let's say you want to do the dot product with a matrix so you want to multiply element wise multiplication of the matrix matrix and then you would add them together you could do torch that sum of ij and then ij and then just arrow and then x and x so this would uh, multiply those dimensions uh, element wise and then do a summation because we're not specifying any output dimension here all right, so if we would just want to do the element-wise multiplication but not the sum, we could do torch.einsum, we can do ij, ij, and then specify ij. Uh, and then, in this case, x and x. Um, but of course, um, we're just using the same here for simplicity. You could, of course, use two different ones. All right, so for the outer products, let's define two different ones. Let's do a is torch.rand, uh, and let's do a vector of three and then uh, three elements rather, and then torch.rand, and then let's, I don't know, five. We would do torch.einsum, we would specify i for the input a, and then j for the input b, and then we would do ij. And we saw this example on the slides too, but then we would just input a and b. Now for batch matrix multiplication, um, we can do sort of, we define two different uh, three dimensional tensors. So we would do torch.rand, we would do 3, 2, 5, and we would do b equals torch.rand of 3, 5, and 3, all right? And um, we want to, in this case, multiply this 5, the last dimension of the a, with the second dimension of the b, which is uh, also 5. I mean, the, they need to match, sort of the having the same number of elements. Uh, so we would do torch.einsum, we would specify the dimensions, in this case, i, j, and k for the input a. And then we would do i, um, because those are going to be matched. Then k for the second, and then l for the last one. Uh, and uh, so here, i needs to match, and then uh, the k needs to match. And then we would do arrow, and we want the output, uh, let's see, i, j, and then l. Right, we want to multiply these these uh, this dimension with this dimension for all of the uh, batches, which uh, in this case we have three examples in our batch. So we want to do that. We just do send in A and B, and that's how we do it. Of course, now I've made so that you could just do torch dot BMM, and it would also work. But these dimensions, uh, you know, if you flip these dimensions, but you still want to do the same thing, you could just flip the indices here and uh, reorder them the way you like. So you don't have to permute the input in any way. 
Now, let's say we want to uh, obtain the diagonal of a matrix. We can do that if we first initialize X to be torch.rand and it's going to be a three by three. So it's going to have to be diagonal. Uh, but then we would do torch.einsum. We would do II and then we would just do to I uh, and then X. So again, if you're confused over this, uh, this would just obtain the, the diagonal elements. Uh, but you could uh, write out the nested loops and check that this works. And then for the matrix trace, so this would be the, uh, the sum of the diagonal, uh, we would do torch.einsum of ii, and then just simply arrow, right? That would sum, sum those values, and then we would send in the input x. All right, so I think you now have seen a bunch of different examples for einsum. Of course, these are only the basics. You can do so many more advanced ca use cases, um, and maybe I'll do another video on more advanced uh, cases when using einsum, but I think this is really enough to build you a solid foundation to explore more with einsum and to see the benefits, and perhaps you now agree that einsum to rule them all.